Remember when everyone was twisting the night away or going crazy for the Beatles? Well, today we're taking a groovy journey back to the 1960s to explore the wildest fads of the decade. Get ready for a trippy ride into the past on this episode of Rerun Zone. Number 10, The Twist. Let's kick off our shoes on our journey through the swinging 60s with the dance craze that had everyone's hips moving, The Twist. In 1960, Chubby Checker released his cover of The Twist, and it was like a match to a powder keg. The song exploded onto the charts and suddenly everyone was doing the simple but infectious dance. It didn't matter if you were at a high school sock hop, a fancy country club, or just grooving in your living room. If the twist came on, you knew it was time to get moving. The twist was a dance sensation like no other. Suddenly, you didn't need a partner to hit the dance floor. You could just let loose and do your own thing. It was the great equalizer, young or old, rich or poor. Everyone could twist the night away. Number nine, tie-dye everything. If you wanted to make a far out fashion statement in the 1960s, there was one surefire way to do it. Tie-dye everything. From t-shirts to dresses, from socks to headbands. If it was fabric, it was fair game for this wild and whimsical trend. The tie-dye craze was all about embracing the unconventional and letting your freak flag fly. People would gather in the backyards or garages, armed with rubber bands, buckets of dye, and plain white clothing. They'd twist, fold, and tie their fabrics in intricate patterns, then dunk them in vibrant colors. The result? A one-of-a-kind, eye-catching masterpiece. Wearing tie-dye was like saying, I'm not afraid to stand out, man. Celebrities like Janis Joplin and Joe Cocker rocked the look on stage while fashion designers like Halston and Yves Saint Laurent incorporated tie-dye into their high-end collections. This colorful trend left an indelible mark on 60s fashion and is a definite piece of groovy history. Number eight, Troll Dolls. If you grew up in the 60s, chances are you had a little friend with a wild shock of hair and a mischievous grin. No, not your kid brother. I'm talking about Troll Dolls. These pint-sized, so ugly they're cute creatures were the must-have toy of the decade. Troll dolls, or Wishnik trolls as they were originally called, were the brainchild of Danish fisherman and woodcutter Thomas Dam. He created these funny-looking figures for his daughter, and soon, every kid in town wanted one. By the early 1960s, troll dolls had taken America by storm, with their signature wild hair and impish grins. Part of the fun of owning a troll doll was customizing its crazy hairdo. You could brush it, style it, or even give it a wild new color with markers or food dye. Some folks even claimed that troll dolls brought good luck. All you had to do was rub their belly or whisper your wish into their fuzzy hair. Despite their quirky appearance, troll dolls captured the hearts of millions in the 1960s. So if you still have a troll doll lurking in your attic somewhere, Give it a wink and a belly rub for old time's sake. Number seven, lava lamps. Okay, man, let's talk about the ultimate 60s dorm room accessory. The mesmerizing, the hypnotic, the one and only lava lamp. You know, that trippy blob filled beacon of chill that took the 60s by storm. It was the perfect mood lighting to complement the groovy vibe. Invented by British accountant Edward Craven Walker in 1963, the lava lamp was like a miniature psychedelic light show in a bottle. The mesmerizing blobs of wax would ooze and morph in a hypnotic dance, casting an otherworldly glow on your space. It was like having a little piece of the cosmos right there on your shelf, man. Lava lamps were the ultimate accessory for any hip 60s abode. They were the perfect conversation starter at parties. Just flip one on and watch your guests stare at the bubbling spectacle. Some folks even claim that staring at a lava lamp could open up your mind to new realms of consciousness. Far out, right? Lava lamps are an iconic symbol of 60s cool. They embody the era's fascination with the psychedelic and wanting to bring a little bit of that trippy magic into everyday life. Groovy, man. Number six, coonskin caps. Hey, pioneers. Remember when every kid wanted to be a rugged frontiersman like Davy Crockett? Well, maybe not if you're under 60, but let me tell you about the must-have accessory for any aspiring frontier hero. It was a little something called the coonskin cap. 
This Davy Crockett inspired fashion craze had kids playing frontier hero in the backyard. The coonskin cap craze kicked off in the mid 50s thanks to Disney's wildly popular Davy Crockett TV miniseries. Fess Parker starred as the legendary folk hero and his signature cap, made from real raccoon fur and complete with a tail, became the hottest fashion trend since sliced bread. Suddenly, every kid in America had to have a coonskin cap. They were the ultimate status symbol on the playground. With your trusty cap atop your head, you could transform into a brave explorer, ready to tame the untamed wilderness of your backyard. Toy companies churned out countless cap replicas, and the fad even inspired catchy tunes like The Ballad of Davy Crockett. They represented the era's fascination with the American frontier and the desire to capture some of that adventurous spirit. Number five, Ouija boards. When slumber parties got a little too quiet in the 60s, there was one surefire way to liven things up. Break out the Ouija board. This mysterious talking board game promised to let you communicate with the great beyond. It was the spooky slumber party staple. The Ouija board, also known as a spirit board or talking board, has been around since the late 1800s, but it really hit its stride in the 1960s when people became fascinated by the occult and the supernatural. The idea was simple. You and your friends would place your fingers on the pointer, or planchette as it was called, ask a question and let the spirits guide you to the answer. You'd ask it questions like, who will I marry? Or will I pass my math test? But every once in a while, things would take a creepy turn. The pointer would start to move on its own or spell out a chilling message. Of course, you always suspected that one of your friends was actually moving the pointer, but no one would ever admit to it. Whether you believe in the power of the Ouija board or just see it as a bit of harmless fun, there's no denying its place in the 1960s pop culture. Number four, Beatlemania. In the 1960s, four mop-top lads from Liverpool took the world by storm and changed the music world forever. John, Paul, George, and Ringo, the Beatles, were a cultural phenomenon, and their fans were completely obsessed. Beatlemania kicked off in 1963 and quickly swept across the globe. Wherever the Beatles went, hordes of frenzied fans followed. Girls would scream until they lost their voices, burst into tears, or even faint at the mere sight of their idols. You had to have all the records, cover your room in Beatles posters, and don't forget to join the official fan club. You'd read every interview, analyze every lyric, and dream about one day meeting your favorite Beatle in person. Beatlemania showed what an incredible impact the Beatles had on music and pop culture. They were a force of nature that swept up an entire generation. Number 3. Go-Go Boots if you wanted to make a bold fashion statement in the 1960s, there was one surefire way to do it. Slip on that pair of go-go boots like Nancy Sinatra and let your feet do the talking. Go-go boots with their low heels and bold eye-catching colors were the must-have footwear in the 1960s. They were named after the go-go dancers who wore them in nightclubs and on TV shows like Hullabaloo and Shindig. Every young woman wanted to channel her inner go-go girl and dance the night away in these stylish kicks. Go-go boots were versatile, too. You could pair them with a the miniskirt for a night out on the town or wear them with a shift dress for a more modern, sophisticated look. They came in a rainbow of colors from classic white to bold red and even metallic silver. Some even had buckles, zippers, or chains, making them a true fashion statement. Go-go boots are, without a doubt, an iconic symbol of 1960s style. Number two, bell bottoms. Well, after go-go boots, you just knew this one was coming. If you wanted to be a cool cat in the late 60s and early 70s, there was one fashion trend you couldn't ignore, bell bottoms. These far out pants with their tight fit at the thigh and dramatically flared legs were the ultimate symbol of counterculture style. Bell bottoms first sailed into mainstream fashion on the legs of hip young people who went to the boutiques of London's Carnaby Street and San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury District. They were a radical departure from the straight-laced skinny trousers of the early 60s, a rebellion against the establishment. The beauty of bell bottoms was their versatility. You could dress them up with a flowing shirt or blouse and platform shoes for a night of dancing. 
or pair them with a tie-dye t-shirt and sandals for a laid-back hippie vibe. They came in every color and pattern imaginable, from classic denim to wild paisley prints and psychedelic stripes. Bell bottoms remained a symbol of the free-spirited, anything-goes attitude of the late 60s and early 70s. They were a lifestyle and a way of expressing your individuality. Give a little peace sign for bell bottoms, an iconic symbol of the 60s era. Number one, mini skirts. Now onto our number one choice, the mini skirt. And what's more iconic than this fashion item that embodies the youthful, liberated spirit of the 1960s? This daring, leg-bearing style took the world by storm and forever changed the way that women dressed. The miniskirt revolution started in London. That's where fashion designer Mary Quant made the style popular in her trendy boutique, Bazaar. Quant wanted to create a fresh, fun look that broke away from the conservative styles of the 1950s. Her miniskirts, which typically ended several inches above the knee, were an instant hit with young women eager to embrace their femininity and challenge societal norms. Suddenly, miniskirts were everywhere, on the streets and the clubs, and even in the workplace. They came in a variety of materials, from playful PVC to classic wool, and were often paired with colorful tights, go-go boots, or Mary Jane shoes. The miniskirt became a symbol of the youth movement, representing a new generation of women who weren't afraid to express themselves through fashion. If you want to know more about 60s culture, check out this groovy video right here. This is Rich from Rerun Zone. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.